Hey everyone, in today's video we're going to install a drywall on the ceiling. Stay tuned. Alright, so I've got the first section of drywall in the bathroom and ready to go up. And I've got the back of the drywall facing me so that I can tilt it kind of like this. And so the good side of the drywall will be facing out when I put it up on the ceiling. Now, since I'm doing a full width drywall installation, I have to look at all the other obstacles I may run into also. So the first thing I've already run into is that the wall studs, you can see the distance between the wall studs there, is a little more narrow than the distance at the top of the ceiling. So I have to be really careful about that, that I don't cause any damage to the drywall. The other thing I need to be conscious of is the shower valve there. So when I go to lift the drywall, I have to make sure I don't run into that. And I've already measured down that shower valve is about 70 inches from the ceiling. So I should be okay once I clear that. Another potential obstacle is this box here. So as the drywall starts to tilt up, I could run into this cover. So I'm going to take the cover off before I start to install a drywall. So this end of the bathroom is going to be a little more troublesome because we've got our temporary lights up there and we've got these two sconce boxes here. So I'm going to have to really plan that out. And then down here we've got our supply lines and our drain line there. So I'm going to have to really look at those and be careful of those when I'm actually putting in the drywall. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and lift the drywall up to the ceiling and I've calculated and Typex drywall weighs somewhere in the neighborhood of about 2.2 pounds per square foot. And I've got 22 and a half square foot, so I've got about 50 pounds of drywall that I'm going to be lifting up to the ceiling. Now I've got the um, stool positioned here. I'm going to be standing on that once I get the drywall up to a spot where I need to step up onto a stool. So I've got that ready to go. I'm actually going to turn it around so that the bar is on the opposite side. Uh, I hit another obstacle here. Alright, so it's up there now. That didn't go as well as I thought it would, but we've got it up there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and screw off the drywall. Now, before I do that, what I did was I checked the measurement from the corner over there to the edge of the drywall and did the same thing on this side. I just wanted to make sure that this wasn't installed crooked. And it looks like this measurement over here is about an eighth of an inch longer than the other side. And I also looked, there's some gaps kind of at the back wall over there. There's a gap back there, it's about a quarter of an inch. And then there's also a gap over here, which is about three-eighths of an inch. So it looks like this room is, of course, probably not square. And so I'm just going to go ahead and live with that. The backer board that's going to be installed on this back wall should cover the gap there. And then the drywall that's going to be installed on this wall should cover the gap there. Now to install this drywall on the hat channel, I'm using these number eight one and a quarter inch fine thread screws and they're also called type S. Now the typical screws you would use when you're installing drywall are called type W and those are coarse thread but you don't want to use those when you're installing the drywall on hat channel. Those could actually strip out. So 
we're going to avoid that. Now, the one problem with getting number eight fine thread drywall screws is they are very hard to find. I could not find them at Home Depot or Lowe's or any of the local supply houses, and I had to actually go online to look them up and, and get a quantity that wasn't too uh, extreme. So I was able to get 100 pieces instead of buying a five pound tub of screws. And I'll go ahead and throw a link in the description below to where you can find these. Like I said, they're very hard to find. Okay, so to install the screws, I'm going to use my screw gun here. You can also use something like this, which is an attachment for a cordless drill. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and install some screws on the end here. And I want to make sure this board is as tight to the ceiling as I can get it. And then after I screw off kind of around the perimeter a little bit, what I'm going to do is make some lines on here. I'm going to get the dead man out of the way and make some lines on here so I can mark out where I need to screw in the, the field of the board. Okay, so I moved the dead man to the center of the board and what I'm doing is screwing off the end down there. I wanted to make sure I kept this tight as I went along here. Okay, so what I'm going to do now <clears throat> is make some lines along the hat channel all the way to that back wall. The other thing to think about is I have a big gap right over here for the can light. So I need to be really conscious of that. I don't want to put screws in there and miss the hat channel. Alright, so I clamped the straight edge up there. Just got a board to use as my straight edge. And I'm going to draw along that and make my first line. Alright, so since I wasn't smart enough to remember where I had uh, sectioned off the hat channel up there, what I have done is I'm going to start to cut out the hole for the can light first. So I made a crosshair centered right there on the ceiling where the tub's going to be. So it's about 15 inches from the wall, from the back wall back there. And then it's centered between these two walls here. This is my template that, I, that came with the can light. So that's for putting 4 inch can lights in the ceiling. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the hole out now. And I'm just going to cut out the hole using the saw here. I was going to use a roto zip but I decided not to pull that out just to cut a simple hole in the ceiling. Glasses are fogging up here. Okay, so I found the elusive sectioned hat channel in the ceiling around the can light over here and proceeded to screw off the drywall. So I've got screws installed at 10 inches on center all along these four rows here. And so the next thing to do is to cut out for the fan over here and then to attach the clips to the side wall over here. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and cut out the fan in the drywall, so right around this area here. It's not much drywall really to cut out there, but I figured I'd just go ahead and do that now before I put the second sheet of drywall up. Um, so what I'm going to use is the roto zip. Here's the roto zip and I've got this guide point bit on it. You can probably see that there. On the end of this bit there is a guide for tracing around fixtures. So I've measured it's roughly about a quarter of an inch something like that where the guide is so I don't want the guide to stick up much higher than that above the drywall. So somewhere around I would say 7 eighths of an inch total maybe 
is how far the bit's going to stick up above the base of the roto zip. I'm going to go in a counterclockwise direction because the bit's spinning clockwise, so I want to have a little more control by going counterclockwise. I've also put a tarp on the floor because the drywall dust does tend to settle and kind of stick to everything. So you don't have to do that, but I, just for me, I like to stay, keep this project fairly clean and organized if I can. Alright, so we're going to attempt to redeem ourselves here. Now we ran into the problem with the nail on this wall over here, so that slowed us down. And so what I've done this time is I've checked to make sure that all the wall studs are clear of nails. And so we have no nails up here now. I actually found like three nails sticking out that I didn't notice before. So those are all gone. The sconce boxes over here. You see I've taken those down. I just undid the screws there. The bars are still up. And then also the light, the temporary light that was here is gone. That's down here somewhere. So we are going to go ahead and get our second piece of drywall up. much up there on the ceiling you just have to switch situate it now and we should be good okay so the ceiling is all screwed off you can kind of hear an echo in here now I did have one issue with the screw right there and I'm not quite sure exactly why that screw went in and just kind of spun there so that was kind of weird because it's right through hat channel so I'm not sure what's going on there so uh, that's no big deal that's the only screw I had an issue with in here I did go ahead and finish the cutout for the bath fan. I used the roto zip for that. That's all done. I'm going to have to put the shroud back up there. I have to remember to put that up before I lose it and lose the screws. Then on this side here, I just have to put the screws through the clips there to tie those into the sidewall. So I'll do that last. And then we can kind of declare this first stage of drywalling done on the ceiling. And I was smart enough this time to make a little diagram so I knew where the hat channel sat in the ceiling before I started to screw things off because on this side, as you remember, all the cables run through this part of the ceiling. So if I missed there, that may not have been very good. So at this point, I've only planned on putting one layer of drywall on the ceiling. I may put a second layer, but one of the issues with putting in a second layer is going to be the can light back here. Because if you remember, the clearance over that block is very minimal. It's probably about an inch. And I can't be any closer than a half inch from that uh, blocking up there by code. So we're going to have to see how this goes here. All right, so now that we have the drywall on the ceiling, we're going to do what I believe is going to be our last noise level test here. And so I've done the same thing we did before where we've got the foam position about a foot and a half below the ceiling. And I've got the hair dryer turned on at a foot and a half above the floor. So I'm going to stop talking here so you can see the noise levels. Okay. 
So it looks like we're around 35 or 36, which is about, I believe, three to four decibel levels below what we had before we installed the drywall. Okay, so the second test we're going to do is the same test we've done all along here, which is to drop a basketball from six feet above the floor and see what the impact noise levels are like. So I'm going to do that next. 71. 59. 64. 62. So overall we had a slight improvement in our impact noise levels and putting a second layer of drywall including maybe some green glue between those two layers of drywall would probably improve it quite a bit. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and share the video and subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for future videos. Visit our website at DIYApprentice.com